Hey homeschoolers, I'm Melissa Webb, former full-time classroom teacher and homeschool mom turned full-time business CEO. I am determined and dedicated to helping you in this journey. I wanna give you sound, educational, practical tips and advice, at the same time making sure that you're enjoying the family journey that you are on. So if you are looking for a place to be encouraged and inspired, you have found the perfect podcast. Homeschooling is a work of heart, is truly the perfect place to start. So welcome. Let's jump in. Well, hello, friend, and welcome back. I hope you are doing excellent today. I am. I just had a great conversation earlier this week with one of my bestie best, Kel. And she, if you aren't familiar with who she is, gosh, we've been friends for over 30 years. We were teachers together. We've done so many things together. We've started businesses together. We've hosted a podcast together. We go way, way, way back. She is a school counselor. And I just admire and respect her so much. We were talking earlier in the week, and she introduced a concept to me that I had not heard before. and. For the next couple of days, I just kept thinking about it and how much I really liked what she was sharing. I thought, I'm going to create a podcast on it. So this week's podcast is called Bystander or Upstander. As I was mentioning, I was talking with Cal and she was talking about this idea of bystanders versus upstanders. Now, a bystander is someone who sees something take place but they do not intervene. And it could be for all kinds of reasons that they do not intervene. But an upstander intervenes. As much as I love the idea that we could all be upstanders all the time, I don't think it's possible. And that's why I thought this is a discussion worth having with you, but also for you to then have with your children. Because as I thought about this over the last couple of days, I realized that to be an upstander consists of three very important components. An upstander must, one, feel empathetic. Imagine themselves in someone else's shoes. That stirs a desire to do action. So we need to make sure we're teaching that. The second component in being an upstander, I believe, is to have the ability to choose wisely because there are situations and times where intervening may not be safe or smart. So that's an important conversation to also have with our children. And the third important component is it must require some form of an action. There must be some form of involvement to become an upstander. And again, may not always be the case that that's even an opportunity. So I just think this is a great discussion topic. I will tell you that for Cal, she's a school counselor. And as you might imagine, she sees children being left out. Children get bullied at her school. And so she shares and she teaches all of her children and students there at that school how bystanders might feel uncertain or hesitant when they see something like that happen. But an upstander is someone who's going to be able to overcome that hesitation and take a positive action. And then she gives them tools. And that's a big part of her job. She teaches a lot about how to be empathetic and what that even means, making wise decisions, what kind of actions children can actually do. Because a lot of times children do not feel very empowered, but we can help them with all of that. Raising upstanders is not just about jumping into every situation and telling our children, you have to go help that person right now, all the time. Go, go, go. It's not necessarily the case. What's really important is that we teach our kids to recognize when helping or supporting can make a difference that it's a wise decision to make and ways to do it. Okay, we know that children learn from what they observe. And 
we also know that this starts in our homes. So it's so great that you're listening this week because you as a parent are the person who sets the first example of showing that empathy and that wisdom and ways to take action. And as I was jotting down some notes that I wanted to cover for this week's episode, I remembered a time in my life. I was in college. This was back in my dating days, pre-Greg Webb. And at the time, I'd been dating a guy who did one of the kindest things that I had ever seen a human being do at that time in my life. We were driving somewhere. We came to a red light. And right in front of us as we're stopped at this red light, crossing the street was this elderly woman. And she just had two bags of groceries. They, they were, didn't look like they were especially heavy, but they were heavy for her. She must have been in her 80s. And she was walking so slowly and hardly able to even carry her grocery bags. I remember sitting in the passenger seat and thinking, I don't know that she's going to make it across the street in time. I'm watching the blinking number get smaller and smaller. And I'm having the empathy. I feel terrible for her. And I'm like, oh, I hope she's going to make it. All of a sudden, as I'm thinking about that, and we're sitting at this light, he turns to me and he says, hey, I need you to jump out of the car. I need you to come over here and take the wheel. I want you to go up to the next light. You're going to make a U-turn. Meet me back here. It was just so quick. He just knew what he needed to do and what he wanted to do. And at the moment, I still wasn't quite sure what was going on. But, you know, I jumped out of the car, ran over, took the wheel, and I saw him go straight over to her. She was actually very afraid of him at first. And he took the two bags and assured her, I'm just going to help you. I'm just going to help you. The light turns green. They make it across. And I do exactly what he said. And when I came back, uh, she had just lived right nearby in some apartments that were right there. And I see him walking her over to her door and handing her back her bags and waving and her smiling at him. I mean, that is an example of an upstander. This was somebody who felt the empathy. So did I. But so quickly, he made a wise choice. He had the ability to tell me to drive. Had he been driving by himself, I'm not sure what he would have done. Probably pulled over at the next light, tried to get back. I don't know. But it really matters that all of the pieces can fall into place. That always stuck with me. I've never forgotten that kind of kindness. And the thing that I have realized through life that is that even small acts leave a big impression on people. Like I said, that has stayed with me for decades now. So small acts that we do as parents do leave big impressions on our kids. So I'm going to give you three practical ways or ideas that you can implement starting today and very intentionally implement in your home. So here we go. Let's raise some outstanding upstanders. Idea number one, it's important to teach empathy through open conversation. So obviously you could see something in real life happen and, and have that conversation. But there are so many great books that teach empathy through story. There are shows and movies you could watch. The idea is to talk about feelings and empathy to your kids. Don't just assume it's going in and that they're able to translate what that really means. You want to use real life examples. You want to ask questions like, how do you think that person felt when that happened? Or what could have helped or, or what would have helped in that particular situation? Building this empathy foundation will help kids better understand when action is necessary. There are great books out there. I think of the book Wonder. I've read that as a whole class read several times. Great conversations around empathy come up. What would you do if you were there? Uh, I will actually link to commonsensemedia.org. They have all kinds of lists of books that teach empathy that you can break down by the age of your child, 
and even by the type of media that you're interested in, videos, movies, books, etc. So I'll link that in the show notes. But my second idea is this, and that is to do some role playing. Role playing is an excellent way to teach children about some possible scenarios that could happen. And practicing ahead of time builds confidence. You already know this. Like studying for a test, rather than just be told on the first day, hey, I just am giving you a math test. If a child knows that you're going to get a math test on Friday, it's going to cover these things. Practice. They're not going to be the exact same problems, but they're going to be very similar. Then they're going to go into that test on Friday more confident. Same thing with writing. So many times, you know, parents will say, oh, the end of the year writing test is coming up. My kids are so nervous. Well, of course, if they haven't been doing any writing all year, that could be intimidating. But like all of the students in our writing programs, they've been writing all year. When that test comes, they already have the confidence because they've been practicing ahead of time. So practice possible moments where somebody might be a bystander versus an upstander. So I'm going to give an example. Um... Let's say your child goes to a dance class and a new girl shows up and she looks really nervous and a couple of kids start whispering and giggling about what she's wearing on her first day. It doesn't look great or it looks funny. They're just, they're not being kind. You share this scenario with your child, your son or your daughter, and you ask, how do you think that new girl is feeling when that's happening? And your child's probably going to say all the, all the right empathetic things, embarrassed, sad, left out, any of these things. So you just address that. Absolutely. That would be an example of empathy. And you can feel that because you're imagining yourself in her shoes. Now, what do you think a bystander would do in that situation? Have that conversation. And then ask, what would an upstander do in this situation. Now, I don't know what your child might say, but possibly going over and talking to the new girl could be an option. And including her, asking her things like, so what school do you go to? Are you homeschooled? I'm homeschooled. Do you do other things besides dance? And just start to include that child. If something like that is said by your child, you can say, what a wise decision. That's showing kindness. It's wise and it's a good action. And then keep that conversation going. What about the other kids who were teasing her? Now, your child at that point may say something like, I don't know what I would do about that. So you can suggest things. That's the whole point of role playing. Give some of your thoughts. You could suggest Maybe saying something like, hey, I actually like your outfit. I think it's great everyone has their own style. This allows the girl, the new student, who's maybe feeling a little self-conscious to feel better about what she's wearing. It's also modeling for the other children that were poking fun that not everybody agrees with them while not being mean to those other kids but also not ignoring what they said. And again, you're going to have your own ideas for this. This is just kind of top of mind what's coming to mind. But again, you're just going to encourage these kinds of wise decisions. The truth is we can stand up for someone while also setting a positive example without putting other people down. That's true kindness, setting a good example. And I will say, no doubt, that new girl would be so thankful that your child was there to do that. So don't forget to point that out as well. My third idea is really just to watch for and recognize when your child does have upstanding moments or your husband has an upstanding moment or your wife has an upstanding moment. When we can share an upstanding moment, not from a place of pridefulness, but being more like you caught that, like I caught what you did, and offer up positive reinforcement. That reinforcement that somebody did the right thing 
is again going to boost confidence to continue to act as an upstander in the future. It does start with us. It starts with us as parents. How are we acting and reacting? When are we bystanders? When are we upstanders? Having this conversation about the differences. When is being a bystander the better, smarter, safer thing to do? It could be a situation that looks dangerous. So maybe an upstander simply calls 911. These are great conversations to have in your home and with your children. I like to remind families all the time, as a homeschooling parent, it is not your job to only teach math and reading and writing and science. There is so much more that needs to happen in the realm of teaching and being a quality human being is really important to learn and to practice. And I will tell you that a world filled with upstanders, ah, uh, wouldn't that be a beautiful place? Yes, all we can do really is start in our own family. Be ourselves the best upstander we can be. But here's what I believe. One upstander inspires another. And soon it's trickling outside of our family and, and into a, maybe a small group, that dance studio. And then maybe into a bigger group, a community. And then maybe into a city and into a state. Right now, as I'm recording, it is <laughs> smack dab in the U.S. presidential election race of 2024. And half of the country is about to be elated and half of the country is about to be devastated. How are we going to react? Are we going to be bystanders and just sit back, grumble under our breath, are we going to allow negative things to happen? Or are we going to be an upstander? That's really what I want. Regardless of who our next president will be, it doesn't matter. We're, like We can still be the upstander in our home, in our communities. And that is what I am hoping. I am hoping that all of the adults of our great nation will show empathy and choose wisely and act as the great upstanders our country needs, knowing full well that our children are always watching. Right on, my friend. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening this week. Hey, if this was something that you found valuable, don't forget you want to subscribe or follow so that every time a new episode is dropped, you'll be the first to know. And hey, before you go, if you are looking to get some of this academic writing under your belt and outsourced so that it's one less thing freeing you up to enjoy more time with your family, hey, you're going to want to head over to Write on Web. Dot com to see what kinds of resources and materials I have available for you. I will look forward to seeing you there and I will look forward to seeing you here in our next episode. Right on!